Hello and welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And in today's session, we're going to be describing more about working with mixtures. So in video six, I introduced how you could create a mixed severity distribution. And in this uh, video, we're going to extend that idea and show uh, a little bit about the underlying mechanics. So let's set up uh, the back end to get some nice prints. And as always, we import uh, build and QD from the aggregate uh, library. And I want to build two, uh, I'm going to do this by hand, build two distributions, um, two aggregates. One is going to be a uh, Poisson frequency, and then one is going to have a negative binomial or gamma mixed um, uh, frequency distribution. And they're both going to have a uh, mixed severity distribution. So I want to start with 100 claims. I want to be uh, 10 million excess of zero. Again, working in thousands. And then I'm going to have a mixed uh, log normal. And I want to have a range of uh, means on my log normal here. Notice the, the um, commas within these uh, vectors here are optional. You can put commas in if you like. Um, they will just get to get stripped out by the, the parser. And okay, so that's my means. And then I want my CVs to be one, uh, one and a quarter, uh, two and a half, and five. So we've got increasing means and increasing CVs. Uh, and the weights are going to be 0.5, uh, a quarter, an eighth, and an eighth. You can actually enter an eighth as a, a fraction. It accepts fractions uh, in the in the, the parser. Okay, so I want this to be a uh, Poisson uh, distribution. Okay, and then let's just uh, uh, run that and do the diagnostics on it. And okay, so what do we see here? We see it's uh, computing with bucket size a quarter. The validation looks pretty good. We're getting you know 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 5 error on the severity and aggregate. It's failing because the aggregate error is so much higher than the severity, which is a sign that there's not quite enough space uh, for the answer. So what we should do there is increase the bucket size is generally the way to solve that problem. So we go up to a half and we see, OK, that's coming out as not unreasonable. So that's good. I also want to make a version of this with a negative binomial um, frequency. So I'm going to call this A and let's call this uh, NB here. And I'm going to use a mixed gamma. So uh, mixing on the Poisson to give me a negative binomial. I want the coefficient of variation to be uh, uh, 0.4, which is a fairly serious amount of uncertainty. This would maybe be a, a sort of casualty, specialty casualty book where there was quite a lot of uh, pricing uncertainty. And uh, so let's run that and execute it. So what we should be seeing is the only thing we've changed is the frequency distribution. And you can see um, if you've got Poisson 100, your variance is 100. So your standard deviation is 10. So the coefficient of variation of your frequency is 10%, is 10, 10 over 100. Uh, if we do the mixed gamma uh, frequency, we're sort of adding a, a minimum uh, CV on the frequency is 0.4, even if you had an infinite claim count or very, very large claim count. So the uncertainty in the Poisson was, was immaterial. You'd still pick up about a 40% uh, CV. And you see indeed here, you know, 100 is, is a pretty big claim count. So there's, we've diversified away a lot of that risk. Uh, but the uncertainty in the frequency coming from the mixing distribution drives a CV on the frequency of um, 40, uh, 41%. Uh, the mean, though, is the same. The CV on the aggregate now, so here we've got severity uncertainty driving a 60% CV. Now we've got both the severity uncertainty and the mixing uncertainty on the frequency driving a 72% uh, um, CV. All right, so maybe uh, we should uh, we should look at these. I just want to introduce a little bit of um, uh, Python here. So let's import pandas um, as PD, and then I want to make a little data frame. Um, so let me just remind you, uh, sitting behind AP, you've got this data frame called density DF that contains all the 64,000 um, different uh, simulations are, are in that. 
Uh, let's um, let's extract from that the p total, which is the distribution, the discretized aggregate distribution. Let's extract both of those um, and then concatenate them together to make a data frame that we can sort of look at. Uh, um, that we can look at. Yeah. So we're going to do a p. We want uh, p total out of this. And then we want, um, sorry, we want also A and B density, DFP total, and I want to concatenate these uh, side by side. Um, okay, so that's looking, uh, that's looking about right, but we want to, let's just give the, um, column name something more meaningful so we'll call them uh Osan and Negbin. okay all right so now if we um plot that we're gonna see okay so this is our two aggregate distributions um and you can see as expected the negative binomial version is more skewed uh to the right so and and more uh, more spread out. It's got a higher variance and a higher skewness. It's easier to see really what's going on if we use uh, log scale on the y axis. So here we see uh, you know thicker out in the tail. We see the impact of the ten million dollar uh, limit. This this these bumps are um, around uh, limit sizes and uh, the accumulation of probability as a result of that. So there's clearly a difference between these two distributions, which uh, is what we would expect. Now, in, in terms of understanding the mechanics of the uh, mixing, there's a data frame called the report data frame, which gives you details of uh, exactly how uh, the mixture components were uh, combined. So if we look at this for the Poisson example, we've got our four mixture components. They've all got a $10 million limit and a zero attachment here. We'll see later on, we can actually vary the limit and attachment. Um, we've got our weights. We've got 100 total claims, and then the weights in this case are applying to the exposure that we give it, which is the claim count. So when we ask for 50% weight, we're saying 50% of the claims come from uh, the smallest severity, 25, 12 and a half, 12 and a half up the, up the way. If we'd given it expected loss, the weights apply to expected loss. So you have to be a bit careful about that to make sure that your weights are consistent with how you're specifying your exposures. Um, the severities, uh, five and ten, the, the so this is five thousand and ten thousand. The ten million dollar limit is not impacting these at all. This was fifty thousand is slightly truncated by the limit. This was a hundred thousand with the biggest CV, and you know we're we're seeing a sort of two and a bit percent uh, reduction there because of the limit. And then the blended severity twenty three forty seven, um, and then the aggregate loss uh, coming out. 23, uh, 47 with the, with the 100 claims. And then the aggregate CV, we've already seen about 60%, skewness 3%. So this independent column is adding up these uh, four mixture components as though they were independent. And that's all the Poisson does. So there's, there's, there's nothing doing with the other columns or this mixed column. The empirical column here is what aggregate computes. And then the last column is the error. And as we've already seen, the error is very good. Uh, we've got great accuracy going on here. So that's the, that's the Poisson model. There's sort of nothing happening there. But when we convert to the negative binomial, um, now we see some different things happen. So firstly, we see, let's just look at the frequency CVs here, 14, 20, 28, 28. So that's just because of the Poisson distribution. The frequency CVs here now on the negative binomial version are all slightly greater than 40%, because remember the minimum, no matter how big the claim count is, once you've got 40% mixing CV, you're never going to get a, a frequency CV below 40%. So it's 42 when we've got 50 claims, 44 at 25, 50, 50, almost 50% CV here for the two larger buckets. And then we also see compared to the CVs here, uh, and if we can get these both on at the same time. So the CVs are higher um, because of that higher uh, frequency CV. So the aggregate CVs for each of the components here are higher than what we were seeing here. 
And the impact is greatest on the smaller claim count because this is, is, is in a sense, it's sort of picking up pricing or systematic uh, uncertainty. Whereas out on the right hand side here, you're picking up uh, severity risk, which tends to be uh, more idiosyncratic. And then overall, we're, we're seeing, so the independent column now would take these four uh, separate aggregate distributions and add them up as though they were independent. And that would give us a CV of 64.8, 60, 65%, not much more than we were seeing here from the Poisson, because again, these, although each individual bucket has got the mixing uncertainty, the four things are averaged out together and added as though they were independent. And that isn't really what you want to do. The whole point of mixing is you're saying, my line of business operates in an economy, and you know we have the same weather, we have the same inflation, we have uh, other uh, systematic features, and, and we want to uh, in, ensure that they are aggregated correct, correctly across uh, all the components of the book that we're modeling. And that's where the mixed column comes in. So here, rather than adding the four components independently, we're going to share mixing variables. So the simulation, if you, if you were simulating this, you would simulate a mixing variable, and you would multiply it by 100 to get the overall claim count, and then that would be divided up between uh, the four lines of businesses. Poisson's, their actual claim counts would then be simulated and they would be added. So they would tend to have bad outcomes altogether or good outcomes altogether. And what we see is, you know, the mean is the same, and but the C and, and the severity, uh, the severity is the same, uh, and the aggregate mean is the same, but the aggregate CV is increased here. The aggregate skewness actually goes down because the standard deviation uh, goes up and the skewness is normalized by standard deviation. So this mixed column is the result of this and is matched by the empirical outcome. And you can see we're matching the 72 to the 72 uh, quite closely here. Um, so that's how uh, mixing um, works to share a mixing variable across the mixture components to make sure that you're capturing the non-diversifiable systematic risk uh, in the line of business that you want. Thank you.